Good morning, friends. Good Monday morning. It's a, a foggy morning here at my house in uh, upstate New York. And we had a wonderful Sunday service uh, yesterday at United with Christ in Auburn. And uh, it's good to be with good to be with the folks there again. And then <clears throat> starting this morning, um, our folks led by Connie York will be doing a vacation Bible school uh, for children ages uh, up to sixth grade. And um, they've put an amazing amount of work into decorating. They've uh, we've we kept bought a whole program and uh, have about at least 30 kids from the from the neighborhood that are coming and uh, so anyhow keep them in your prayers this week um, many people their first exposure to the gospel is vacation bible school and so we don't want to be dismissive or um, ignore the fact that that uh, this is an introduction to the gospel for some folks and so <clears throat> but uh, getting to our devotion this morning, um, we're going to start in John chapter 10. And John chapter 10 is one of the most widely known um, chapters in the book of John. And it talks about Jesus being the good shepherd. And uh, and so he uses this figure of speech um, to demonstrate who has access to the sheepfold, who has authorization to the sheep, and... Um, Who's a true sheep? Who's a true shepherd? And and so um, we need to understand figures of speech were a common tool used in teaching and instruction um, in the first century. Jesus was a master teacher, and he used figures of speech frequently. And so I have a um, a playlist on my YouTube channel um, that I refer to entitled "Scriptural Imagery," and so. If you want to learn more about figures of speech, if you don't understand figures of speech, you will not understand the scriptures. And so this is what one of the tools that Jesus used to separate the wheat from the chaff, to separate the goats from the sheep, is figures of speech, figurative language. And um, understanding figurative language is pivotal and crucial to understanding the teachings of Jesus and understanding uh, the context in, of the New Testament. And so Jesus uses figures of speech uh, many different ways. He uses parables, which is a natural story with a spiritual application. He uses idioms, which are common colloquialisms that help uh, explain something. Um, he uses uh, uh, <clears throat> metaphor. The scripture is full of metaphor. Um, and so very, very crucial for you to understand metaphors. Um, and so all of these things are very, 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 very important for us to understand. And if you don't understand them, um, or if you think you may be able to understand them better, I highly encourage you to go to my playlist called Scriptural Imagery, because communicating through imagery, prophetic images, uh, symbolism, is all through the Scripture. And if you don't understand it, you'll start, you'll apply symbolic language to and you'll, you'll uh, try to interpret it literally. And much of the, the language is not intended to be taken literally. It's intended to create an image in the mind of the listener uh, to help them um, get a concept of what Jesus was talking about. And so um, John chapter 10, verse 1, we'll start here. It says, Jesus speaking, he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. All right, and so the children of God are referred to as a, in, a, in another metaphor as sheep. And the leaders of the children of God, leaders of the sheep are called shepherds. And so uh, he's saying if, you, if someone climbs into the sheepfold through a window and not the door, like anybody who would be, have natural access to the sheep would do, then you're a thief and a robber. Oh, that's good. And it says, verse 2, But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. That sounds very straightforward. To him the gatekeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And so we, as followers of Jesus, the great shepherd, the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, 
we must learn to know his voice. Now, knowing his voice isn't always uh, as clear as knowing your husband's voice or your child's voice or your wife's voice um, because Jesus, by the Spirit, can, communicates to us in the inner voice, the inner man, and obviously through the scriptures as well. Um, but we as sheep of his sheepfold need to learn to hear, and hear his voice and hear his leading. And so that comes in many different ways. Um, it comes through divine appointments. Many times we'll hear the voice of the shepherd through other believers. And um, because if we uh, realize that, that the Spirit of God is in other believers, we'll realize that God will use other believers to communicate to us most of the time. Okay? And so to him, a gatekeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he is brought out as all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers. Now, one of the challenges in today's society is we have all kinds of strange voices vying for our attention. You know, yesterday we had a great service in Auburn and I talked about the difference between anxiety and faith. And, you know, we have all these voices coming at us now. Um, and all of it is, you know, the news, it, they're peddlers of panic. They are peddlers of anxiety and fear. And so um, we need to understand the shepherd's voice different uh than those voices and we need to recognize that those voices are all distractions from the the voice of the good shepherd and um and so i you know i'm a guy i've always kept up with um uh historical events i always keep up with current events but at the same time you have to limit that because it can become a distraction and it can get you into anxiety and fear because that's really what the news is all about is creating panic and fear and that's, uh, you know, all politics now. That's all it's about is um, this group is trying to uh, do away with the Constitution or democracy. This group is trying to create um, a communist country out of America or a socialist country. And, and all of those voices are generated to create panic and fear in people so that they support a certain politician or will contribute donations to a certain cause. And, um, and, you know, sadly, church has done that in some ways, uh, creating fear and panic. But you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to this. You don't want to that. Well, of course, I don't want to go to hell. But to, you know, to cause somebody to try to turn them to Christ out of fear, that's contrary to the, the nature of Scripture. Jesus, if you notice, when um, people were caught in sin or whatever, Jesus didn't have harsh words for them. He, said, he told them to turn from that repent from it and go, you know, turn to a different way. But his harshest words were for the religious leaders who rejected the now move of God and rejected the Messiah that they were supposed to be waiting for. And so our job as Christians and as leaders is to help introduce people to the voice of the good shepherd. <clears throat> and the voice of the good shepherd is speaking good news. Good news is what the, the, t the term gospel translates into, is good news. Well, if we're causing fear and panic in people, we're not spreading the good news. And, and um, so, um, uh, verse 4 again, When he has brought out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech... Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. And so, again, if people don't understand these figures of speech today, they're, not, they're in good company. Everybody didn't understand Jesus' figures of speech then. Even his disciples many times would come back later and say, Lord, explain to us the parable of the wheat and the tares. And he would go through it and explain it to them. And, you know, you'll occasionally have people, uh, Bible teachers say, well, he used parables because it was easy to understand. That's the opposite of what Jesus said. Jesus said, basically, I, I want to use parables so that hearing, you know, th those with ears to hear by the Spirit will hear and will grow. Those who don't have that, even what they have, if they don't turn 
and understand you know, to, to, to the Lord, turn to the good shepherd, even what they do, what little understanding they have will be taken from them. And so parables and figures of speech were used to separate the goats from the sheep. And, uh, and um, so, so this figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, he said to them, and so he doesn't just stop. He says, all right, let me put it another way. Again, he said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All right, what did he say? He's the door. All right, and so much, much of his parables focus on uh, the kingdom of God is like this or that. Well, he's the door to the sheepfold. He's the door to the kingdom. Once you go to, through the door, you have access to everything that's on the other side of that door. And so that's what he's giving us is access to the things of the kingdom. All right, truly I say to you, I am the door to the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. Who is he saying that came before him? Well, largely the scribes and the Pharisees and uh, the Sadducees and uh, the chief priests that were corrupt. All right, he said that the, chief, the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. Why does the thief come? To steal, kill, and destroy. The thief is the one who comes not through the door, not through the gate, okay? Um, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Um, we need to understand Jesus wants us to have life. He wants us to have joy. He wants us to love and enjoy life. That's the good news. Um, religion comes to uh, control. And so he didn't come to bring a religion. He came to bring a kingdom. And that kingdom is full of righteousness, peace, and joy. If what you're doing is not full of righteousness, peace, and joy, Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of God is not food and drink. It's not hair buns and dresses and makeup. It's not all of that stuff or the absence of all of that stuff. It's not dietary laws. It's not... Uh, any of that stuff. The kingdom of God is not food or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy. What brings righteousness, peace, and joy? That's probably part of the kingdom. And so if your walk, if your faith is full of fear, if your faith is full of, uh, or your, your Christianity, your religious posture and position is full of fear, it's full of uh, um, doubts, it's full of uncertainty, it's, it's, it's not comfortable, it's not joy, it doesn't bring you peace and you're frantic and panicky, then you're not in the kingdom of God. That's not the part of the kingdom. And so the kingdom of God is righteousness, right standing before God. You're in good standing and, you know, uh, um, free of, of fear and condemnation. Righteousness, peace. What is peace? The, the peace of God rule in your hearts and joy. Our walk is meant to be a walk of joy, okay? All right, so this thief, thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. He wants us to have a joyful life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd laid down, lays down his life and uh, for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep for, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my way here. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep, he sees a wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and, fle and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I, I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will, all, they will also listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. And so this is reflective of um, you know, the, the difference between a true shepherd and, and a hired hand. A hired hand, when he sees a wolf come, he's like, I'm out. Or if you see, in, in, in the modern day context, if you're a shepherd, a pastor, and a better opportunity comes along, um, you, you know, if you're just looking for a better opportunity and not looking to, for the outcome, the best outcome of the sheep of your pasture, then you're just a hired hand, you're a hireling. And so, you know, that's part of, uh, part of 
proper church order is that the shepherd isn't just a hired hand. Um, because if you can hire and fire your pastor, then he, he's, his hands are tied in some ways uh, from being able to share the truth with you if he's worried about you know, getting, losing his job. And uh, at the same time, if he's a hired hand and um, he knows that he could be fired, well, then he's going to be looking for a better opportunity to come along if he knows his job is not secure. And so that whole arrangement really needs to be rethought because it's, it's just not biblical. Um, you know, the sheep don't hire and fire a shepherd in, in that metaphor, and it shouldn't be the case um, in churches. Now, there are occasions where obviously some, something goes wrong and things need to change, so there needs to be recourse for that. Um, but just uh, because of spite or other things like that, that stuff shouldn't happen. So anyhow, I hope that this has been helpful to you. This is an introduction in John, to John chapter 10, Jesus being the good shepherd and we being the sheep of his pasture. And so I hope that you have a good day. I hope you have a great week. I hope that you'll um, comment and share uh, this on your page and help me disciple the nations. And I hope that you'll pray for our Vacation Bible School folks this week. Uh, they've put a tremendous amount of work into decorating and getting ready for, for VBS. And so um, we want to see uh, people's lives changed and impacted. And we want to see that their labor uh, was not in vain as well. And so God bless you. I hope you have a great time, a great day, a great week, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. And remember, the operating system of the kingdom of God is love. Parks out.